So you've got a website or you're planning one for your business, but how can you easily optimize it for searches in just a few minutes and do it for free? Well, you're in luck today because there's a new-ish SEO plugin on the scene called Rank Math that's gonna do the job and it's super easy to set up and I'm gonna show you how, so let's go. I made a video a while back going over my then favorite SEO plugin for WordPress called Yoast, which was the industry standard for quite a few years. And honestly, it still isn't bad, but that's about all I can say about it now that I've been using Rank Math. Um, and I like it better for a few reasons. First, because it's super user-friendly and really easy to figure out. It has way more features that you'll actually use and it's 100% free, unlike Yoast, which basically operates on a freemium model. It's a pro freemium product, meaning some of it's free and a lot of it actually isn't. And the stuff that you have to pay for on Yoast is actually included with Rank Math. And honestly, it works better on Rank Math than on Yoast where you pay for it. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how to set it up on your WordPress site and how to use it so your website and all of your content is gonna be properly optimized for search and you'll be in prime pouncing position to start outranking your competition in no time, absolutely for free. And yes, I do this on every client website that I create for them and I also make these same recommendations to the students in my paid program because it works. And I do wanna let you know, um, we are covering a lot of ground here today, so I wanted to make it really easy on you by offering a free checklist that you can just download and follow along with as you're setting things up. So you can just watch now without having to take notes. So just go to westmcdowell.com slash rankmath to get that checklist, and I'm also going to link to that in the description below. So let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are in the back end of WordPress on the dashboard. So the first thing we're gonna do, we need to install Rank Math. So you're gonna go over to Plugins and then Add New. And then just go up here and search for Rank Math. And we've got it right here. And we're in luck today because it was actually updated 17 hours ago. I was just checking it out. And this is a brand new version that's gonna make it even easier on you. So I'm really glad I did this today rather than yesterday. So I'm just gonna click on Install Now and then on Activate. Okay, so now it's gonna ask you to connect a free account or you can skip it. I'm gonna really recommend that you activate it though because if you, if you do this, it's gonna give you a lot more insights and a lot more actionable tips for you to take away. So I'm gonna click on Activate Rank Math. And then from here, you just sign up either with Google or Facebook. I'm just gonna click on Continue with Google. I'm gonna choose my email here and then just click on OK. All right, pretty painless start, right? So uh, so here's what I'm talking about when we've got the, the, with the new version. So this is brand new, where it basically asks you um, if you wanna go for easy, advanced, or custom mode. Um, here's the thing. We're gonna go easy and here's why. Because for advanced, there's so many things you can do on this that are going to um, probably take you triple the time and maybe get you one or two percentage points uh, higher in, in your effort. So I think easy is the way to go here for 99% of you. So let's just go click on easy and then start wizard. And I just don't wanna be overwhelming. I know a lot of you are coming from kind of a beginner background. So if I showed you the advanced way, your head might just spin around. So, all right, the first thing we're gonna do is just fill in some basic information. It's asking you uh, what kind of site you are, and they're gonna make recommendations for you based on all this stuff. So um, in this case, this is just a fictitious business. So either, you know, if you're a personal blog, you would choose that. If you're a news site, personal portfolio, like if you're a designer, um, I would say most of you are gonna fall into small business site, unless you're e-commerce and you're a web, a web shop. And honestly, I'm not really sure what other personal or other business would mean. So I'm just gonna click on small business site. And then it's gonna ask you, you know, what kind of business you are. So this is really going, if you're already on Google My Business, you're gonna to wanna to get as close as possible to that uh, category that you put in on there. So I'm doing a fake marketing company, so I'm just gonna type in marketing, and nothing's being found for that. So since nothing's being found, I'm just gonna leave it an organization, and I think we can get a little bit more granular in this a little later in the process. So company name, just gonna talk marketing, and of course, this should match exactly what you have in Google My Business. And now it's gonna ask you to upload a logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna drag it over here on the stage and then use this file. And what they want is um, 
They say a square image is preferred by the search engines, but just make sure you're falling in within the minimum size and the maximum size. And now, uh, you know how when sometimes maybe you've had in the past, people would share a page on your site and a really wonky image would show up, like something you didn't intend to show up there. So what this is gonna do is that you, you can upload a default image. So if someone shares one of your pages that no other image was specified to be included in that share, now you can control which image it is. So I'm just gonna upload something kind of general that's just meant to show the vibe of the company. And I always like to have kind of a happy customer image, so I'm just gonna use that. All right, now click on save and continue. Okay, now here's where things can get a little technical. So um, Google Search Console is a really great tool that lets you see exactly where you fall in line in terms of your keywords and where you're ranking for them. And it is a good idea to connect this to that, but um, I don't wanna bog people down in this training with this, because it does get a little techy, but if you get if you download that free checklist, the, the, the quick start checklist uh, description below this video, that's gonna walk you through this step. So, but again, Search Console is not really going to, um, it's not really gonna help you rank any higher, it's just gonna give you insight of how you're already ranking. So we're gonna skip this one for now. So just click on skip step. All right, so the site is now ready. One thing to do here, I would encourage you to enable auto update so that way you're always on the latest version of it. And then we're done with this first step. So to click on return to dashboard. Okay, so we're now we're on the basic dashboard area for uh, rank math. And the first thing it, it brings you to is local SEO. And I think that's a really good start because if you're a local business, this is one of the main benefits of using Rank Math. And this is one of the things that Yoast charges you extra for. So let's just go ahead and fill in some basic info. And I'm assuming when we're doing this, that you've already claimed your listing on Google My Business. That is a very important first step. So uh, most of you are gonna be an organization, but if you're more of a, you know, a business coach, a one-man operation, and you're kind of more of a personalized business, maybe it's, it goes by your name, then you would click on person, but I think organization is going to be right for most of you. So we've got the name of the business already there, we've already got the logo set up. Um, and so this is where you would just put the homepage of your website, and you would put in your email address here, and here is where you wanna put in your address. Here's the thing. Again, make sure that you're putting it in exactly as you have it in Google My Business because one of the things that can really help you rank locally is consistency. Let's say for instance on your Google My Business, uh, you're listed as 123 Main Street with an ST period. What you wouldn't wanna do here then is you know, spell it out. It has to be super consistent. Don't ask me why, Google is smart but they're not smart enough yet to uh, to be able to differentiate this. So make sure you're you're very clear and very consistent. And that includes, you know, if you if you're using number 12, make sure it says that versus, you know, suite 12, just keep it consistent. And then locality, that would be your city. Region would be your state, assuming you're in, in the US here. And then USA. And then address format, we're not gonna need to mess with that unless you're in a foreign country where um, these things are kind of written out differently. But here it's address, city, state, zip code. So we're fine there. Okay, we're already in our business type. Let's see if we can put in anything more, um, anything more specific here. Yeah, no, I guess we can't. So we're just gonna leave the organization now. Okay, so opening hours. This is another one of those things you wanna be consistent from Google My Business to Rank Math. So you'll notice, you know, and for my, my US uh, people here, we don't go by the 24 hour clock, obviously. We go by the 12 hour clock, but I think Rank Math is based somewhere in Europe. So they have the default set to the 24 hour clock. So we're gonna go ahead and switch it over to 12 hour but that still doesn't change this over. So what we need to do is make sure it's kind of written out in the 24 hour clock, I think. And I think when you use this, it'll kind of carry over the translation. But if you don't know nine, so 17 is 5 p.m. So do the math from there. And you know, if you're closed on Saturday and Sunday, you just remove those and then keep going down. You're gonna add your phone number and specify if it's customer service, tech support, just choose the, the best option here. Price range, this is optional, but if you're a really expensive high-end service, you might wanna add in the, you know, the, the four 
dollar signs just to kind of weed people out. And then from here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna select your about page. So this, this website is kind of a dummy site with no content on it yet, but you would basically just type in about, and if your about page is already there, it'll pop up here and you'll just click on it. So I'll just click sample page and contact us, same thing. So no, nothing found for that. So, but if, if it's here, you would just click on it. Then Google Maps API key. So it's a good idea to have Google Maps integrated in your site. There are other ways of doing it, and this is actually a paid option, not by Rank Math, but just to have a Google Maps API. It's a little technical, it's a little more for developers, so I think we can skip this. And then geo coordinates, not super necessary because they already have your address. If you want to include that for some extra points, I'm not, I'm not really sure if it actually gives you any extra points if you do it, but if you want to do it, just do a search online for geo coordinates. You'll pop in your address and it'll give it to you. Then click on save changes. Now, what do we do after this? You know, most of these things over here on the left panel have already been pre-configured in the way that's going to do the most good for the most people. So you can go through these one by one if you want to and get things exactly how you want to. So I'll just, I'll just kind of walk you through this first one right here, Global Meta. So it gives you options. Um, you obviously want your site to be indexed. That means that search engines can find it. You probably don't want links to be uh, no followed. Um, a lot of this gets kind of technical and they've already, like I say, they've already put in the, the default options that are going to be the best. And like, you know, if you want to have a different separator character, you can do that. So by that, I mean, when people search for you online or find a post or anything, the way it's set up now is to have the post title, then a hyphen, then the name of your business. If you'd rather, I kind of like this one personally, I think it looks cleaner, but it's really just up to you and then capitalize titles. I think that's actually a pretty good idea. You probably should be doing that anyway when you input it, but if in case you miss anything, it'll just make everything look nice and uh, consistent. And we've already got this image that we've uploaded for social media, so I'm just gonna click on Save Changes here. Everything else is pretty good to go. Um, one thing you definitely wanna make sure is you have sitemap settings the way you want them, so I'm just gonna click on that down here. So again, all these options are pretty much configured to be uh, the way they should be. So I'm not gonna make any changes here. But the one thing I do wanna show you now is what do you do, how do you use Rank Math as you input new pages and new blog posts to make sure that you have the best chance of ranking? So I'm gonna go over to my website right now. And while I don't really have a blog, I do have a podcast. So. This is just the view of anytime you input a blog post or even if you, this works for posts as well as for pages. So these can be articles or these can be, uh, just think of the, the standard pages on your site, the home page, the about us page, any page that you're trying to rank for a specific keyword, you wanna go through this exercise. So you'll find the page or the post and then see how we've got this score up here. Right now it's not doing so well, it's 18 out of 100. So you're just gonna to wanna to click on that and then to open up all the goodies here you get from Rank Math that show you how you're doing and exactly what you can do to do better. And by the way, I should say, this is a podcast, so it's like show notes. This is not meant to be a really all-encompassing article, but I still think it's worth looking at to give you a sense of it. So the first thing you wanna do is enter in your focus keyword. So SEO doesn't do a whole lot of good if you don't know what keyword you actually wanna rank for. So in this case, it would be Instagram hashtag strategy. So I'm gonna pop that in here. Okay, so now just knowing what it is, I've already improved quite a bit in my score. I went from 18 to 69 here. So let's go ahead and let's take a look down here at basic SEO. So this is kind of a little checklist that shows you what you're doing right and where you can use improvement. So it says you're using focus keyword in the SEO title, because I've got that in the title, that helps with SEO. Um, focus keyword not found in your SEO meta description, which is this guy right here. So what that refers to is, think about when you do a Google search, let's say we typed in Instagram hashtag strategy. Uh, this is the SEO title, and this is the SEO description. And most times it's just kind of pulled from an excerpt from your article, but you actually wanna be a little more intentional and write something that's designed to entice the click. So what we wanna do is make sure the title has the keyword and the, the description. So let's go ahead and edit that snippet. So the title's already good to go. 
All right, so I just changed it to discover the Instagram hashtag strategy. You know, I got the keywords in there, the sure to win you more. Yeah, the rest of it's not that important for this video, but I've got it in there. So I'm just gonna close out of here. All right, so now we've gone up to 71, and now we've got a green check mark there. The, the focus keyword is in the description. Next, it says focus keyword is not found in the URL. So that's something that matters too. And obviously you can't really do that on the homepage unless uh, you've, you've bought a domain name like you know Instagram hashtag strategy.com. But let's see what we can do about that. Let's go back to edit snippet and permalink is what we wanna do there. So, all right, so I changed it to Instagram hashtag strategy in permalink and now we've got another uh, check mark. So now we're up to 76. So focus keyword was found in the content. I'm sure it's somewhere in here. Yep, Instagram hashtag strategy right there. And ideally speaking, you probably want to use it a couple times uh, within in the body. Don't overdo it, don't overstuff it, but if you can use it a couple times, you're gonna be really good to go. And the, the one remaining X that I'm getting here is basically saying the content is really short, and it is. Again, this is like this is just show notes for a podcast, but if this were a blog post, I would definitely want this to be at least 600 words, if not longer. If you're really trying to rank for something and it's competitive, I definitely recommend going around 2,000 words. That's just gonna give you the best chance of ranking. Now we can go down even further into additional. So let's see, we say, it says focus keyword not found in subheadings like H2, H3, H4. So what that refers to is, so this, the title of the post, that's what they call the H1. That's the big heading. That's the, the daddy of the headings. Then we got H2s, which is one uh, slot underneath that, then H3s and so on. So what we might wanna do is add in an H2 tag that actually, so in other words, a subheading that includes the keyword phrase. So let's go ahead and click on the plus to add a block and we'll, we'll do heading and it's set, set for H2. So I'm gonna say, Okay, I'm just gonna say the Instagram hashtag strategy that I recommend, and let's, I'll, I'll just kind of move it up here. You know, obviously we're not actually writing a post here, but they, it's not in the right place, but you get the idea. So now we have, now we've got another check mark here. And next, the next check mark, or sorry, the next X is, they want us to add an image with the focus keyword as alt text. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Just go up and uh, add block, and I'm gonna choose an image. And I'll just find one from the media library that's already here. I'll just choose that one. I'm gonna kind of size that down because it's a little obnoxious right now. And so now, um, so the image is there, but it is not, it just still doesn't have the, the, alt, the proper alt text on it. So with that chosen, I'm gonna go to show block settings. And with that selected, it's gonna show me the image settings and alt text right here. That's basically all alt text is is it's meant to be a, a, a text description of the image. So it's also a really good way to get some SEO points. So I put in Instagram hashtag strategy there, and now we're all the way up to 82 in the score. So click back on there to get back to it and click back on additional. Let's see how we're doing here. So it's saying we couldn't find any internal links in your content. That's kind of a minor thing, but if you wanted to go for that, you would just um, find, you know, sign up for my free video masterclass training. So all I would really do here is I would just, uh, I would highlight uh, this text and I would just link it up to the proper page and then you'd have an internal link. So once again, if you want that free checklist of all the steps that we just covered and a few more actually that we didn't have time for, just click right up here and you can download the guide and just follow right along with it, super easy. So click right up here to get that checklist and start out ranking your competition in just days. See you soon.